Uh, name is Kumar Shikantan. I am the VP GM for the campus business for Arista. So I spend all my time worrying about LAN and wireless in particular, and how we're going to grow that business. And I think, as as he mentioned, uh, Arista is very well known, typically for our data center and our cloud and an AI architectures and all the momentum. Right, the buzz is always there. But I always say, while the sizzle continues there, we are building a lot of stake in the campus side and the enterprise. So the company's two priorities today are AI and campus. And you can imagine why we spend all this energy and really the priority to make campus uh, very relevant, right? And mobility field day is particularly very important. We have many field days, as you know. Uh, you will see us continue to invest in mobility field day every day, every year over the years. So that's always going to be a fixture whether we do the other ones or not because that's a very important area. We understand it's very critical for enterprise. And I, you know, having spent a lot of time in land switching over the years with a history in Cisco, and there was a time when wireless was the tail and the tip of the spear was wired, but now it's inverted, right? Wireless really is leading the way. So that's the real, that's the priority that we have. And that's the reason we are here, okay? So a couple of things uh, in terms of the agenda. So I'll just kick it off and then we'll have a very interesting topic with Ken. You heard him last year about uh, about quality and how we build our architecture and technology around EOS. But today he's going to be focused more on wireless, and this is a very interesting topic to be to be discussed. Then we have a number of oohs and ahs moments with the demos uh, around Wi-Fi 7, around UPSK, Agni. There's a number of technologies we can hopefully get through the uh, the the month, which brings the whole portfolio together. Okay. All right. So a couple of things. Um, just stepping back from a LAN and a campus point of view, uh, Arista's growth today in campus, uh, like I see mentioned, we do occasionally get, we didn't know you guys do wireless, or we didn't know, you know, you're just doing the wired business, you know, but that's not true anymore. Uh, this year, we are growing literally greater than 30% in wireless year to year already. We are on a roll. And our entire campus business is growing north of 50%. So just to give you a sense, and we see waves and waves of customers coming out of the incumbents looking for an alternative. So the momentum is there. We tend to do much better as just to give you a view on the enterprise side of the house. So franchise deployments, large scale, distributed campus, large headquarters. So you see us more and more, I call it on the G2000, the global 2000 and the Fortune 500 class accounts. That's kind of where we have most of our traction because of the way we run the sales playbook. A uh, couple of things uh, you probably heard from uh, from Ken last year. Some of the key principles that we apply to our wired and Arista, I call it the X factor, is also applied to wireless. Number one, do more with less, right? Don't reinvent wheels. Don't try to do the same technology twice over. Good example, our Cloud Vision management platform is the same management platform, whether it's on-prem or off-prem. Our new identity system called Agni, Arista Guardian for Network Identity, is the same stack on-prem. Uh, it started in the cloud, and now we are announcing the on-prem version. Same stack, don't balkanize the architecture, build one singular architecture that can take it across the spectrum. Lastly, a uh, lot of focus on operations. I think you're going to see a number of that in terms of security, right? which is really the two, three pillars of how we are going to bring this together. Now, uh, in terms of very specific to wireless, right? You are familiar with the Arista story right from the beginning. We always took an approach of when, when the company bought the asset mojo back in 2018, 2019, what made it different was we focused on the security angle and the uniqueness of the WIPS technology that they had. That was really the driving center of gravity to bring that technology in-house. And eventually that became the wireless portfolio. And here we are with a broad spectrum of capabilities. Now, one point I would make in that is that that particular WIPS technology with the, with the radio, today we have this feature, you see that dedicated tri-band multifunction radio. So it's something we've had in the our wireless architecture from the beginning of time, right? For seven years now. So it's a very mature stack. And I know you're probably going to see a bunch of demos around how we do radio assurance, telemetry, all the other management, auto band stuff is done on this radio and not come in the way of the client radios, right? It's a very unique feature. It's across the whole portfolio and we've had it for years and we continue to take it forward. 
The only other couple of points I would make is, as you know, the Arista's approach for wireless, just to recap, is to disaggregate the stack, take the management layer, integrate it into Cloud Vision, which are overall wireless singular platform for the company, take the control plane of the AP, leave it on the AP. APs have become very powerful. They are very capable. And there's a lot you can do on the APs, including running a mini firewall, application QoE. This, the APs are, can be leveraged to the hill so that we scale with the number of APs and the, as the radio technology scales, and we don't monkey with that, right? Lastly, the data plane, we use standard, industry standard VXLAN protocol to really terminate all the wireless traffic into the network. I call it into the EOS network and just carry the traffic in the EOS segment, which is really how I call we fuse the wireless and the wireless architecture to look like one integrated platform that scales with the network, right? So as Broadcom scales, a chip scale, at the Trident 3, Trident 4, multi-terabit scale, we can just scale with the network. And we want the same unique architecture to flow from the biggest campus to the smallest branch. As long as you have a switch and you have an AP and you have a cloud vision, you are integrated in. So that's the idea. There's a no controller architecture. Couple of other things which you'll see is app QoE, very important element. We spend a lot of energy really capturing those signatures of the traffic that come into the AP and then match it in the cloud uh, in the AI ML engine to be able to sort of classify the class of traffic, whether it's a, a Zoom call or a, or a, a Google uh, video call. How do we really make sure that we give that experience and really get ahead proactively of problems that come in the network, notably in collaboration, right? I think we all know in wireless, the, the troublemaker can always be uh, collaboration uh, um, applications is where uh, you can get into trouble, right? So I think there's a lot of energy spent to make sure that that technology comes to bear, right? And lastly, uh, obviously, cloud managed and on-prem managed. One other thing you will see in this slide, which is new from last year, is the EOS software agent. So we are bringing more EOS agent services like .1x, Identity, VTAP, all those stacks natively onto the, into the AP. The goal being eventually the AP looks like nothing but an extension of the EOS network, right? And we get all the benefits of large scale validation of all the stacks, the regression, all the stuff that Ken and the team have built so that we get the full scale testing and be able to really set it up for very large scale domains. And as you know, a lot of wireless, especially in universities, higher ed, large layer two domains still dominate a lot of deployments. And really we want to make sure that we bring more and more EOS functionality into the AP and take it in that direction so that the whole architecture is unified.